What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Diddle Art with Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting a character called Freezer from Dragon Ball Z and the first thing that we're going to do as always is a sketch as you can see I have um, at my left I have some references um, first of all for the skull uh, structure and uh, one image of the character itself uh, so I, I know how it looks, I know like the overall shape of it and uh, what, what I want to do with it uh, will be something that we will be exploring on the way, the final look of it. Right now I just wanted to have like an overall uh, a skull shape that I can use uh, to start my, my sketch, my drawing. That's really, really important guys. If you don't do the sketch first, it's, it tends to be a really tedious a long process more, more like a, a trying to figure out something that you're not really sure what to do um, but if you have a sketch first it really helps out uh, the the overall process it it does look like um like you need it, it does look like a little messy uh from like i could understand that some people might look at this and see that it's a really messy process but everything is, uh, at, at the sketching process, I see it as everything is, um, like, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's really no that big deal. Uh, whatever you do, uh, you can you can do it because it's your process and you understand it. Uh, right now, I'm trying to define the school shape of this character because his face is really uh, different. It's supposed to be an alien creature looking. So I'm trying to do something different with it and whatever it takes to achieve that goal of having this sketch of the character made, I will do it. Uh, whatever it is, I'm meaning like uh, doing the warp deform tools or, or if, if it was um, a traditional drawing, I will be uh, erasing a lot and doing a lot of different things or maybe doing um, studies first for whatever uh, the result that I want. But right now I need to achieve this shape uh, that I want on this character and I'm using every resources that I can. Uh, as you can see, I have some faces on the left, which is just for me to remind myself of the kind of like the structure of a face and the things that I should, that should be concentrating on or focusing on and I'm trying to be open-minded about uh, what this character could look because th the shape of the face in 2D is really, really uh, weird. And I'm trying to take a little bit of um, uh, freedom, like, like a liberty here, to to do some changes on the shape of the character because the 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 character itself, for me, is not that very. Uh, how do I say that? Like the design is really, is really weird, uh, honestly. And I wanted to make it feel realistic somehow. Uh, so if it's going to be an alien, or is it going, is it going to be this kind of a, a rare creature? Uh, at least have to make sense for me when I'm doing it. Like it has to look like it could exist. So when I paint the the color version of it, it does look like uh, something that could work. That's something that is actually very uh, possible. So right now, when I when I when I'm working on this, I'm trying to to keep some of the things from the original version of it, so it doesn't look like I'm just doing something completely different and completely random. But I'm trying to achieve something uh, like in the middle, something that people recognize that this is actually that character and this is not just some crazy drawing. Obviously after having this uh, rough version of it, I, have, I need a clean version, which usually takes like an hour, an hour and a half to do that. It usually takes about an hour or something like that to, to make this uh, line version before painting. And it's really helpful to have that those lines that really define the creature. If you have those lines, everything is way easier on the, on the painting uh, because you don't have to think about shape too much. 
Uh, you still have to think about it, but more in terms of lighting. Uh, how do you do this shape to be, so people understand this is actually this shape and not something completely different uh, based on the lighting that the, that the character is having. So um, when you have these lines, it really um, cuts a lot of time uh, of guessing stuff. Uh, if, if I was to paint the sketch directly, I will be in trouble with the, with the amount of stuff that I have to figure out first before painting. Right now I'm trying to find an image of, uh, of something I can use as a background. Um, in, this, in this, I just took whatever uh, movie was available on the, on the list of recommended uh, keyframes on this page called film grab that I use a lot as reference for lighting sometimes and having this uh, background that, that I wanted to to have like really dark uh, I can actually start to feel the mood that I want on the character to be and at this point I'm focusing on trying to put some lighting on it uh, starting with the shadows Starting with the with some of the maybe maybe I will put some lighting here and there like uh, highlights, but right now I'm trying to figure out what the what the lighting of the character is going to be, and for that I could either use reference or trying to try to make up by myself completely. So that's a really tough um, task to do. What I do normally, uh, well not normally like lately, what I've been doing. It's trying to find uh, references and for that I, I'm using Pinterest a lot. I'm using Pinterest because it helps me find images that are related to the ones that I already found. Obviously all the um, uh, other uh, search engines like Google or Bing or whatever uh, work the same way but I guess I, there's something about Pinterest that really finds the images that are really really helpful. You, you still have to look a lot through it, but it does look some images that are related to the ones that you looked before. And that's really really helpful. And sometimes uh, it doesn't even have to be a reference exactly for what you want. For example, you can find a reference of something for the lighting, but you also can find a reference of something uh, even though you don't like the lighting, you do like the the angle that is on, or the shape of the of the body that that he has, or even the the style of the painting, or whatever. If you're looking at, at, at another painting instead of a photo, those kinds of things are really really helpful uh, at the end. Whatever you can do to uh, base your work off, uh, it will. It will immediately give a, a sense of uh, like it will it will put something different on it that is really really um, it's really nice it's really nice to have something like that mostly because um, it looks grounded it looks like you have something uh, that you're shooting for instead of just making things up when you made things up it could be a little bit of um, uh, it, it is not accurate it will be some stuff will look unrealistic uh, maybe it's you're working on a project that is really really um, way different of whatever uh, people is used to to watch maybe but if you're doing something that is actually that you have to you have to look real or something like that I definitely recommend you to use reference all the time so right now I'm trying to figure out that backlight that is coming from the right in the in this case and I'm using that girl painting or a sculpture sorry that girl sculpture, sculpture as reference uh, it's really helpful because it really allowed me to see how the lighting uh, projects on the on the face if the light is coming that way and that is something that maybe you can do by yourself if you can if you, if you know a lot about lighting but if you if you're looking at it it really cuts the time like by half because you're you don't have to guess so much you don't have to guess so much about anything um obviously 
there's a problem using so many different references. Where, you, where when so you have to really know what you're using that reference for. In this case, I'm using this reference for the lighting. I'm using this reference for the shape. I'm using this other reference because of the pose, or I'm using this other reference. So sometimes you're 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 using a reference, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to copy all of it because it will look weird. Um, sometimes what I do if I'm if the references are really way too off the topic that I'm doing or not the topic like the what, what I'm trying to reference is way different from what I have I will try to color manage it a little bit like change the colors of it a uh, tiny bit with the color correction maybe or something like that to get it closer to what I need so I don't get so much distracted by the difference of it or I can even like grab colors uh, on it so in this case, I, I could have changed the colors of, of the girl's face to to adjust it more like the colors of my character or something like that. Uh, that could be help, helpful. But let's not get crazy with uh, we're trying to be. Um, lately, I'm trying to be minimalistic about what I do. Um, not using so many tools, but from time to time, I do test uh, test things out uh, using other tools like 3D or or like stuff that is available online or zbrush or whatever but as as mean if you can be as minimalistic as possible with your work maybe you can find a way to to be faster and that's really helpful in in this industry to be fast about something uh, it really does give you an edge over other people that maybe is not that fast um, because at the end of the at the end of the day uh, time is money and money is what like these projects and and people really care about when you're working on on something um, now that was really off topic <laughs> talking about something completely different obviously but uh, i just wanted to point that out uh, that while we're talking about it so right now i'm trying to uh, figure out the the ear and, and the horn how the lighting works and as you can see, I'm always trying to correct myself on the on everything. Uh, here I'm moving that thing uh, to the back. Now I'm no longer looking at the reference that I have at the beginning uh, with the image from the cartoon. Um, but I'm trying to do something on my own. Uh, but it does keep the essence of the character, or at least the one that, the, the way that I wanted it to be. Um, it, is this looking a little bit too pretty maybe so uh, you won't you're gonna see at the end how I change it a, a bit looking I, I needed to have more of a terror kind of looking thing or more like a scary uh, feeling of it so I, I use another reference for that and, and it did gave something to the to the image it did change it some in a way that it looks way more scary or at least that's what, how I see it. Also, a lot of corrections. You want to see a lot of corrections that I made uh, through this process. <clears throat> Sometimes you can see I'm trying to, I'm always creating new layers to just in case uh, I do something wrong or something that I don't like. I always create a new layer so I can, uh, if I don't like it, I just erase it completely and that's it and or change the opacity of it if i do something but i think maybe it has to be less intense i'll because it's using a new layer i can just uh, change the opacity and that will be it <clears throat> and constantly grabbing uh, colors with the eyedropper and then just um, um, keep painting Normally, when I'm using the eyedropper that much, I just keep painting and use the uh, the the key Alt on the keyboard. Um, with that way, I'm I don't have to like click on any new uh, tools or use another uh, farther away keys because using farther away keys are, makes everything slower. <coughs> So at this point, I'm f I'm feeling pretty confident with what I have. Now I know I just it's just a matter of time before I, to I finish it. Uh, I already have like all I need, all the colors I need. I don't have to keep adding more and more colors. 
but the, let's say the 80% of it, it's basically done. Now I have to do it, make it in a way that I can have a more, more of a perfect uh, kind of result, more closer to what I want the character to feel and look. Now at this point, what I'm concentrating on is um, mostly trying to find the, the look that I want on the character, the final one, and also trying to fix a lot of mistakes, fix every mistake that I can uh, on the character, because there's, there's a lot of stuff um, that I'm not happy with. Um, the one that really, really grabs my attention is the eyes. The eyes are really... Um, located in a way that is not the, the proper way so most of the stuff will be uh, most of this part is concentrated on that right now I'm adding some dark tones on the background to to give more of a um, like focused look on the face of the character like because the character has some some light tones uh, so if the background is darker you can it pops up a little, a little bit more and I'm trying to define the the shape of the head a little better. Um, I, the one that I had before was more more like to the original character, but this is again this is my take on it. So it it has to look different, have to look more original. Uh, so I'm trying to do that. And right now I'm trying to put a little bit of more of a creepy look on it. So I'm using that reference that you can see on the left. Uh, as something to shoot for. It's not little, little. I don't have to copy the exactly same thing that is happening there, but there's some stuff that I like on that character that I wanna uh, put in mind. And if I don't like it, I just erase it. That's the benefit of working with digital. You can just change things how much you want it, and that's it. There will be no problem at all. And all this stuff. Uh, that the character has on the on the reference that like a lot of uh, um, holes and stuff, wrinkles on the neck and stuff like that. This is a really cool way to to make mine because it will look more a little bit more scary, and that's definitely the sensation that I wanted to have. Um, I'm trying to modify the shape of the of the helmet of the ball on the on the head because. Uh, the one on the original is way more, it's way bigger, it's way more, uh, it's like, like this purple ball on the head that is really important to the character, so I wanted to keep that uh, and, and the, do that change. Also, the eye is still bugging me a lot, it's really, really bugging me, I, I will eventually change it. And there's a stuff of the shape that I need to, to fix. Uh, mostly it does look like um, uh, some stuff if is happening on the right of the head that is not necessarily happening on the left. So I have to keep an eye on that. Make it look like it really is the character in there and not something that it looks good on the left side but not doesn't look good on the right side, stuff like that. Um, that is cohesive, that is coherent, that it does make a sense uh, in terms of uh, shape. Like why does it have this way, the, like this shape is coming out on this side so big and then there, it, there's no way you can see it on the other side. But why is that happening? It hit the form or what? So I have, it doesn't look, it, it cannot look like it is deformed, it has to look like it's actually happening on both sides. And I'm really, I really struggle with that kind of thing. Um, before I, I, I didn't used to pay much attention to it. Uh, lately, I'm trying to be more detailed on that kind of thing because it really does sell the design um, better. If it, if it, if you are not distracted with all those errors of composition or, or errors of uh, shape, in this case. Um, when you work in a landscape and you have a, a bad perspective, it really takes you out of it and you're like, there's something wrong with this, I don't know what it is, but it does, there's something wrong. And you kind of focus on the idea that you're trying to make because you're thinking about how wrong it looks. Um, in terms of characters or creatures or whatever uh, related to organic kind of thing, if it, if it doesn't look believable in terms of anatomy or something like that, you know that um, it's 
very it's very possible that it's not picked or is not um, like it's, if, if, if it's not understandable um, uh, it's really different to sell the design uh, mostly because we are used to do this to to see this kind of thing like we 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 not we don't we not see freezer characters all the time on the streets or whatever but we do see people and we don't know how a mouth is we don't know how a, a nose is and stuff like that so we have to kind of like keep it uh, as realistic as possible so it does sell the design and it's not something like super weird that we're seeing with looking at if it was super weird or, or in purpose that, that the shape of the head is different from one side to another and it's not an error on perspective then uh, we, we, you, we, we should exaggerate that as much as possible or make that an obvious feature of the thing instead of being accidental looking <laughs> right now it does look accidental instead of uh, on purpose <clears throat> some uh, backlights here and there and some highlights on some places I did add a black uh, page on it so I can paint on top with a really small white one and make that uh, thing to pop up of the image it makes so much sense now uh, when you when you do that kind of thing like make everything darker and then uh, put some accents of light when you, where you need it um, it does make a difference on the shape of the character because when you had the values before you had like the top like the lightest value of all but now they added like 10 or 20 percent of a um, dark um, layer on top of everything when I paint with white it looks way more bright and it looks like it's brighter than it is and stuff like that <clears throat> there's some stuff that needs to be worked on for example that highlighting there in the in the um, oh man, how you say that the eyelashes or yeah like the lower one um, that thing for me it, it made a change on the shape it really does look different now with that with that lighting in there so that's the kind of um, change that I'm trying to go for in in terms of lighting, of defining the, the shape of the character. It looks a bit like a helmet um, overall, but I really do like how it's turning out at the end. Maybe I should have pushed the alien look a little bit more with the nose and stuff like that, but well, there's uh, things to think about later there's some point that you just have to abandon the design not too much like finish it because you can keep working on it and on and on and on like forever that's not good either <clears throat> and now I'm trying to add a grain look on it um, to make it look more like a cinematic kind of thing the grain is always on, on overlap layer and here it is here I change the the position of the other eye I really need that change now it looks more like it makes more sense now located there doesn't look doesn't look like we are now there was something before but I didn't know what it was and that was definitely it <clears throat> and we're getting close to the ending of this video if you like it please give me a thumbs up sorry for taking so much time on, on publishing videos I'm trying to get back at it there was a lot of stuff going on in my life uh, this year mostly positive um, uh, personal things like I got married my parents came to visit it was like I have few months of uh, really concentrated on just on just that also uh, a lot of work going on with the ARC franchise and the wildcard game studio 
and that really um, between family and work it was like there's no way i can love youtube videos that's it thank you very much see you